asking and what data should we be collecting because the wonderful guys at Project Data give us our, our questions and they also give us a set of data. Anyway, so what I wanted to do was, uh, I was asked to give a kind of masterclass and visualization, so I, I said send me some data and they sent me this data about which we're going to see. And the data has got, I've got uh, so, so, uh, some data about uh, a list of users who, uh, go, who work on the A14 project. I've got a list of turnstiles, which I understand to be when they clocked in and clocked out of particular sites. And I've got some diary notes and that, that correspond to the weather. So not much more than that. I look at the file and I say, oh, look, there's a readme file there. And I think, oh, great, readme, wonderful. That'll tell me all about the project. But this is the extent of the readme. So thank you, James, for being so thorough. Uh, all it says is the names of the files. So we've got, so what we're going to do is we have no idea about what we're going to see. We're just going to open up that data set, have a look at it, try and visualize it in lots of ways and, and, and see if we can make head or sense or even the questions that we're going to ask. And has he given us some useful data? Is it, is it going to be meaningful? And what is it all about? So all this tells us basically is that uh, we've, got, we've got different sorts of files. So what I'm going to do is show you a bit of the data and we're going to look at it and I'm going to ask some questions about it. Who knows about the A14 project? Okay, so tell us uh, just a few words about what A14 is. Uh, it's a road construction project. Uh, okay. The Cambridge. Okay. Basically, they're building, uh, expanding, extending the part of an existing road. Right. Building a new link. Okay, okay. And it's about a £1 billion project. Okay, well, a £1 billion project of a road in Cambridgeshire. How many people work on this project? I'm, I'm asking. 25,000. 25? That's interesting. 25,000, that's a really good guess. Anybody else want, well, now you know it's a good guess, so you're not going to guess anything different, are you? <laughs> anybody, else want to, anybody else want to make a still? A, a not such a good guess. Uh, so, um, so let's have a look at our first data set. And let's have a look at the data. And the first thing that we're going to do, and this is horrific, but we're going to have a look. We'll just open up the file. So if I brought the files, what we've got is we've got a set of files here. We've given us a file called users, which is a CSV file, a file called turnstile, and I've put them here. There's that lovely read, readme file. And then I've had these four diary files, and I, I put them in there. So let's just have a look at it. Uh, just open up a text editor and have a look at the users. And this is what it looks like. Um, we've got a list of users. Um, I can tell from down here that they're... Ooh, that's not the way to do it, is it? Um, that there are 25,000 users. So, Sambia, you are right on the money. Was that, did you know or did that an inspired guess? It was a good guess. It was a very good guess. You were out by uh, 234. Exactly, that's a lot. Now that's, you know, that's a big margin there. Anyway, so we can see it's a simple file. It's got an ID which we can probably get rid of because it starts at zero and goes up to 25,000. It's got, uh, that's the first call, it's got an ID which I hope is the anonymous ID of the user. And then it's got the, the first line of the postcode. Where do, where do people who work, what's nice to do is to sometimes ask a question, think about the answer you expect, let's have a look at it in the data and see if we agree or disagree with it. And then if, we do, if, if it's not what we expect, then that's, that's an interesting thing, we can, we can ask ourselves why. Where do people come from, uh, from who that work on this project? Not Kent. Kent, why? Not, right. not Kent. Not Kent, why not Kent? It's too far. Too, Kent is too far. Okay, what, what is far enough then? Where, how far would you travel to be, uh, work on the A14 project? An hour away. An hour, and how far is that in miles? Uh, 60 or 70 60 miles. Seven. So we'd expect to see a circle of postcodes, 60 mile circle around Cambridgeshire. Uh, or an oval because the uh, road's very long. Okay, the road's very long. An oval, that's, that's good. Any advance on an oval in Cambridgeshire, 60 mile wide oval in Cambridgeshire? I think people would travel and stay. Travel? Yeah, travel and stay. Yeah. Travel and stay, okay. Yeah. So if they travel and stay, would that, where would they be coming from then? Yeah. Anywhere. Anywhere. I've got Kent, I've got anywhere, I've got 60 mile radius. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to have a look at that, but just what we'll do as well, just to show you, 
we'll later on, we'll, we'll come back to, this is our turnstile data, we'll come back to that. So, what I'm going to do is, uh, if I'm going to open this, and just to show you what I've done, all I've done here, I run the Power BI, and I've just clicked on the file, and, and, and brought the data in. So let me just show you what I've done with the user data. I've, and this is, I, I, I've just pointed to a, a text file, I brought it in, it comes in like that, I've, I've just renamed the column, actually we're looking at the user data. What I've done is, as it brought it in, and I simply removed that first column, because we just need the, the, the user ID. And then I've, I've renamed that column to be user ID. So let me just do close and apply. And what I'm going to do is, kind of do a gradual reveal here. So let's start with this one, and let's have a look. So, E17 postcode is the most popular postcode where workers come from. We have got, of the 25,000 workers, 300 of them come from E17. Who knows where, who's, who knows where E17 is? Walthamstow. Uh, I, I've actually lived in E17, I know it is, yeah. So, who would, have, who would have known that that's where E17 is? It's certainly, maybe it's, it is just about 60 miles, to, it's about 60 miles to Cambridgeshire. Anybody recognize any of these other? What I've done is I've created a bar chart, and obviously we've got lots and lots and lots and lots of postcodes there. But the, what I've done is obviously ordered it. So the blank postcode. C6 is East London. IG is Ilford, or um, that, that part of Essex close to Ilford. All right. E7 is East London. IG is Ilford. HA is Harrow. E10 is East London. You're not a postman, are you, in your spare time? <laughs> Uh, that's very good. I'm mean, I've, I've impressed. What's this blank postcode? The continuation of East. Oh, not no data. No. Oh dear. Has James given us some dodgy data? No. People don't don't fill in because uh -huh. they weren't required. The file, the field wasn't required. Uh, but having said that, that's only 300 of our 25,000. That's less than one percent of the data. So that's that's something that we can, we can possibly live with. I, I think. No, it's 1%. Some, some. some postcodes like E17 have a lot of people, and other postcodes have very few people. Right. And, and you probably need to amalgamate several postcodes to find people in Cambridgeshire because... Oh, okay, that's interesting. I didn't realize that. So a postcode can have a, a, a lot or a few people in it, yeah. even, even at this level, because I, I thought I kind of... A postcode's typically one side of a street. It's a block. Oh no, but this is this is this is this is the outcome. This is the first block. This is this whole this is not E17 2AB. These, at, at this level you don't really know what you're getting. Okay, all right. Anyway, we've got what we've got. So yeah. uh, it would be nice maybe if we had a data set that said what the population of each postcode was in, we could compare it. So what now I've got this data, what should I do with this data? What would be the next thing? Plot it. On a map? Why not? So Let's map it, and what I've done here is, oh, we'll come on to that in a minute, we'll look at this map. And what I've done, well, come on, be good to me, show me in my map. Oh, dear me, I'm going to, there must be a postcode that he thinks is somewhere in America, because I've geocoded it, so let me just zoom in for a moment, let me just zoom in on Britain. Probably Canada, because they've got a similar Ah, okay, let me just zoom in a bit more. Bring it up. And with, with this plotting 25,000 points, oh. I've gone into Czech Republic. Let me just come over here. Now, is that what we expected? No. And look, and look. No. Who said? Who said? Who yes? Who said yes? Based on um, this lady's oh. assumption that people would move So we've got people coming as far as uh, John O'Groats or somewhere. This guy here, the, this lady, and we've got people coming from all over the United Kingdom. So, any conclusions? What do people... That would advertise your jobs all around the country. Yeah. Okay. Uh, workers travel. And, and they're going to work in Cambridge. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
is that, that, that's, that's about CB, so that's a Cambridge postcode. So the A14, good point, the A14 is about there. But, but it's interesting, there's actually no cluster. Yes. No cluster. No. no. There's no cluster at all from where right. the road actually is. Right. Yes, there is. Now. But it's a reflection that Cambridge has its high-tech cars. Yes, so maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe they're all high-tech workers in Cambridge and... It's sparsely populated. Yeah. Is this more than a, just a simple kind of population map of the UK? Does it reflect? I mean, I can see London, I can see you know another hypothesis. Edinburgh and Glasgow. Yes. What, what the store is close to Finsbury Park. What is? Uh, what, okay, yeah. Yeah, close absolutely. Close to Finsbury Park, yeah. where you can take, take the train to the north. Yes. And connecting to... Okay. Yes. Peterborough, etc. Okay. That's why a lot of people. Yes, maybe so they're living in, 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 in Finsbury Park and, and, and taking the train from up uh, from there. Uh, that, that's possible, yes. yes. It's also got another point is about of how they put in their personal postcode or their office postcode. Well I I I, I suspect I, I my assumption we have to get James here. And again this is what happens. This this is interesting because we think of these questions now and we wouldn't have thought of them unless we'd seen this map. We'd have gone with our assumptions of our 60-mile circle. Yes, but I, I would have thought it was at the personal postcode. Because it's, well, yeah, where do you live? And I mean, a lot of these would be contractors. And so, but yes, a, a, a question to ask. Any other observations about, about this map? But you're, you're one, yeah, I think we talked, spoke over you, is, is it population density? It could be population density, yeah, absolutely. So it could be, I mean, what's interesting that people do travel a long way, and it's, yeah. You, to get the skills, the skills must be quite rare because people come from Glasgow, even from Ireland. Any other comments on this map? It could be that um, if you employ two agencies, the agencies are in town, and you have the agencies postcode. Yes, yes. So again, we, we have the, the where, where, what do these postcodes actually mean? That's a question. We thought postcodes, and, and again, you know, that, that's, that's a question we've got to ask. Uh, strangely enough, not in the README file. So. Yes, but this is a good thing. I mean, what, what's happening here is we're going to now starting a conversation with our customer to go back and say, okay, tell us more about the data, and we're getting a bit more clued up where we weren't before. Um, for me, um, the A14 uh, company has, is, is ready for Brexit because it has absolutely no workers outside the UK, none, in, none from Ireland, none from... I can't see any dots there. I thought the A14 was sponsored by EU. Well, they're not... They've got, <laughs> The data shows they've got no EU, the EU workers. I don't see any dots. The data, the data field has the error checking that only allows UK postcodes. Okay. So well, that's an interesting one. We've only got, and, and this is uh, something about the data, why have they given us data just with UK postcodes? Is it that, well, we saw the postcodes and you recognize them. So it does look like it's UK only. And why have, have they just given us the UK only? Uh, is it was it too difficult to collect the EU? I mean, each, e, all EU countries have zip codes. Field, the input field, yep. when, the, when the user puts yep. in their postcode, it only accepts, it perhaps it only accepts UK postcodes. Mm, yes, maybe, so. so. The links are okay. outside the UK. But we can expect that this uh, project has a lot of EU workers. So we want to say, you know, where, where is the data for all the EU workers? And they're obviously flying in and flying out from Stansted once a week or something like that. We can say that. Okay, so we've had a, had a look at that, that, that data set. Um, I, I, I tried, here's where I start going down a bit of a, a rabbit hole. I go down quite a few rabbit holes, but I tried various other ways of displaying the data on the map in Power BI. There's this thing called the heat map, which look, makes the UK look absolutely terrible, like, ooh. and if we look, we can draw it. I don't know, what, what we can do is we can just come here and we just say, say that we want a, a heat map. So I've switched the heat map on, not in Paris. Does that help or does that hinder? Well, give it a chance to, it takes a bit of time to count those, but maybe that shows, is that any better, any worse visualization or is it just, just look ugly? Well, I don't, I don't, yeah. So this is, this is just all I've done here is I've gone to Power BI and I've switched on a heat map on like that. Now it's off. So that's probably better. So uh, I've tried a few visualizations. That one doesn't work. Now, 
Tambi, you said there were 25,000 workers. How many uh, turnstile entries do you expect there to be that James has given us? Well, that's the first question. What time have we got? So, but we'd expect, you know, most workers clocking in every day. We'd expect 25,000 times for a year, 200. So we'd expect a lot. It's a road project. It's very long. How many different locations? Ah, okay. So let's start looking at our turnstile data. But one thing I want to do is, is the first thing that I noticed was that, um, let me go back to this. Was, okay, let, 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 let's start off and I, I'm going to go back and I'm going to show you the turnstile data. We've looked at the user data, now let's have a look at the turnstile data. I'm just going to go into, edit queries going to where we can see the turnstile data. And so what all I've done is here pointed to the turnstile CSV file, imported it, and I'm just looking at it in here uh, before I, I visualize it. And this is... What, what I can see as well, I, I can just have a look at the columns. What, what are the columns here? I know that we've got 25,000 rows, and I'm just going to, I'll just click on that. So it's, it's, what, what we've got here is we've got these nice green bars, and these green bars give us some sort of distribution analysis, which can be useful, uh, I, I, and sometimes it's, it is and sometimes it isn't. Um, so, for example, if we can almost visualizing the pattern of the data even before we create our Power BI visuals. So what we can see is that we've got this thing called an, an, an ID, and we can see this 28,000 turnstile, that's the, that's the number of turnstile entries we've got, which to me sounds a bit low, because it sounds like every worker's just come in once. And maybe they just come in once, and they, they check in you know, on 1st of January and leave on 31st of December. We've got four years, so I, I know it, for, it must be across four years. It looks like there's four projects, uh, lots... Uh, that, that's quite, now, this is quite interesting. It says, look at this, 647 distinct user IDs. If that's the same user ID, that says, of the 25,000 people that he gave us in that file, actually, 600, we've only got 647 of them have clocked in, in, a, in our time, turnstile data. So maybe he's, he's just given us a, a small amount of data for a particular project or a particular day. Ah. No, I've, I've done column profile on the entire data set. I, I switched that over. Yeah, and so, no, absolutely. Otherwise, otherwise you would have been right. Yes, sir. Do we have any information as to the location of each turnstile? Well, good question. I'm glad you asked that. Let's have a look at the other columns. What we've got as well is we've got these times when they swiped in and swiped out so we can work out how long they were working for on site on that particular day. And if you have a look, you know, 4th of 9th, it looks like if I come back a bit, let's just move, let's move it along a bit. We've got, um, they, swipe, they look like they're swiping in for a few hours at a time. We'll do some visualization of that, but we'll do that. We've got something called auto, which we can probably get rid of because it's got no useful information in. We can see that they, they work for 103 companies, all these employers, these 600, 647 people work for 103 different companies. Let me just switch that off because that's, this is just a bigger view of the column distribution, which I will have switched off. Say that again. So what's that question? Auto comes. So when you clock in, then don't clock out. Ah, that's good. So it is a useful. Thank you very much for telling me that. I thought it was useless, but I didn't know that. Thank you for your subject matter expertise. So we've got some companies. And we're going to have a look at, um, we've got these things, uh, company DE, is that a German company? We've got trades, and we can see there's about 100, 200 different trades on the building. I have no idea. Would somebody want to tell me what panel in and panel out are? That's when you clock in. Sorry? That's when you clock in and uh, clock out. So it's got zero, so it's why there's a one in one, So a panel in is? The fingerprint reader. Okay. So 265 is, is the actual the number of the fingerprint reader? Oh, it's the location. It's the location. Okay, okay, good. Thank you very much. And then we've got areas and sites. And we can see that there's uh, four sites and there's nine distinct areas. So maybe there's sites and within sites there's different areas. And we can see, okay. So we, we, we've, got, we've got that information. Say something. Go ahead. There's 21 uh, sites you clock in at, but 22 
book out that, which is quite odd. Yes. So what we might do is find the site where people are clocking out. There's more odd stuff than that, I tell you. <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely. So, but what we've got is we've now got an idea of, of the, the scope of the data here. We've had a look, and we can see at least, you know, we know there's nine areas, 22 panels, four sites. And the question is, over what sort of time as well? So maybe let's, let's start plotting this data. So let me just do one thing. First of all, we talked about how there were only 647. We know that only 647 of that 25,000 people have actually clocked in. So let's, let's just do something. So I'm, I'm going to go back here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at this. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to do a calculation. What I've done, let me explain it. I've, I've done a calculation. I've said user on site. And if they ever clocked in, it's yes. And if they never clocked in, it's no. So we can see this number should be, yes, 647. Yes, it is. Okay. So let me just very, very quickly, for those who care about this sort of thing, show what we've done here. And all I've done is, first of all, whenever I come to, I've got some data, I'm going to write a couple of very simple calculations. It's a pity that Power BI doesn't do some of them for me, but first of all, when I always come to a data set like users or turnstiles, I always want to know the number of users. So, because I'm always interested in, in looking at the number of users or the number of turnstiles or the number of diary entries uh, by site, by area, and so, so forth. So all I've done is written myself, it's like having an Excel formula bar. I've just said the number of users is the count rows of the user table. And that will just give you the number of users because every user in, is a row in the table. We know that each user is a unique, every row is a unique user. That will just give me that. So what I can do then... Sorry? Oh, what I do is I can click and down on that, and then I can control, scroll up, and scroll, scroll down. Yeah, that's useful for demonstrating. But what we've done is there is, is we've done this. And so, first of all, what I've done is, is I've used that, and I've said, I've taken that number of users, and I've stuck it on here. We can see we, kn we know we've got 25,000 users. My calculation's working. We know that. And then I've, I, I've, I've said, what I've said is, okay, let us me have a look at the num and here what I'm saying is for each user just give me the number of turnstile events. So if I have a look at my data, what I, I've created an extra column on there. If I have a look at my data, what I've done, I go to my user data. It's now got this column saying I can see that user ID 63087 from E17 had 433 turnstile events, whereas. Uh, uh, the next user had, had none. And then I've just done a calculation. If, if, if this number is, is, is not blank or greater than zero, then I say yes, the user has actually been on site. If not, no. And what I've done is I've, I've come to the fact that I've only got a, a, a small fraction of the people on site. So going back to Jane and saying, give me some proper data here. You've just given me, obviously, 25,000 work on site, uh, but you've only given me some proper data. Let's go back to our map. And what we can do here is, oh, dear me, it's, it's really a tiny United States, but let me just come, oh, bring it in, move wrong. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to say, okay, on here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my user on site and I'm going to stick it in my legend field. And again, it's, it's, it's done something, I wish it wouldn't do that. I'm not sure there's a way to switch off. But you can see, what I've, if I look at my data colors, what I've got is no is red and, and blue is yes. So what we can say is, we can see this, let's go have a look. There's quite a lot of red and quite a lot of blue. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to come along to this. I'm going to put on my filter. I'm going to take my user on site. And I'm going to say, I just want to look at those users that have actually, the 647 users that have been on site. And I'm, I'm interested in that distribution now. So we're looking at something which is more interesting now, which is the actual people who've been on site. And we can see that there still is the whole UK-wide distribution. So uh, that's fine. Maybe, yeah, absolutely. Not many people from Ireland there and so on. So, but yeah, it still means that still people are still coming to work across the UK and, 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 and taking long journeys. 
So, let's have a look at our, our turn style. I've, I've, I've finished with that. I have finished with that. Use the map. Yep. Yeah. We've had a look at that. Okay. Let's have a look at our turn style data. And the first thing that I suppose we want to do is, is work out uh, when it is. So here I've got a map, uh, a chart, and I've done the chart and I'm saying, basically, I'm looking at it over quarters. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come along here, put this on here. Uh, let's take the site ID off. So this is our first chart, and we can see the data that he's given us has this big spike in, 20, in, in the last quarter of 2017. Now, is, was, this, was the project like this, or, or is, has he just given us a subset of the data? It looks a very strange... Does anybody want to comment on this? Is that what we expected? Why not? I wasn't expecting it. No. Right. What were you expecting? I was expecting a couple of humps where there was a, a major interchange. Yep. And there would be a lot of work at this location. Yep. And that crew would finish that job, and then they would move to another interchange, and there'd be a okay. spike in work. And if it was well balanced, maybe they would have leveled it out. But okay. So James, we're going to have some hard questions for you after this. You've given us some very dodgy data we're deciding. <laughs> Okay, Let, let's do a couple of things with it. You talked about how people might move from sites. Let, let's, let's, let's do one thing and let's say, okay, what we can do is we can come along and say, okay, let's take a look at our turnstile data and let's take the site ID and put it on the legend. Okay, and what I'm going to do, and we can see there's four sites, which we knew, and we can see that something's happening. What I'm going to do is change that visualization now into 100% column chart. And that says, okay, that ignores the fact that different quarters have different numbers and it says what is the percentage of people working on at each site. And we can see that in this blue site, site number 42, slowly people, the, the proportion of workers is, is decreasing and this, this uh, the purple site, which is I think number 58, so is, is increasing. So we can see almost that almost work is finishing on one site and, and moving to another. We might want to, instead of looking at it that way, we might say sites are, what I've done here is I've asked myself the question, are sites, uh, or we had sites and areas, I'm just proving to myself that an area is a subset of a site. So this kind of look at the four, what we've got is we've got the four sites on our columns. And it would be nice if, if James had given us the names of the sites uh, rather than calling them. Maybe they, they are called by their numbers. But within each uh, site, what I've done is I've put the areas, again, the numbers on the rows. And we can see that site 42 has, there's nowhere on, on this chart that has two, two values on a row, which would be two, an area across two sites. So we can say that a site has many areas. So we can, if we wanted to do that. And so we can come back to this one. And we can visualize it. Again, we might want to come along and we, instead of visualizing it by sight, we might want to, let me have a look, visualize it by area. Let me take it. Why is that? Have I done something wrong there? Am I getting, so let's have a quick look if I've done that right. Site ID. No, I've done area on something else. Let me just try that again. So, again, maybe that becomes more obvious that we can see work happening in certain areas and, and stopping in that, that particular pink area and so on. Okay. So, what, what I, I'm doing now is we have a lot of, lots of different attributes for those areas. And what I'm doing here is doing something almost very boring. Because what I'm trying to do is I've just created six very boring bar charts and they just show the number of turnstile entries. Again, I did them on those calculations, just give me a count of the rows of the turnstile events. And we're looking at them uh, by company, uh, this is by company DE, by trade, by site ID, by event project, and by user ID. So, uh, anybody want to, any surprises, any comments? Yes, uh, and 51805, it would be interesting to find out a bit more about him. And, and we can do that because we can click on 
51805. Sounds like Jean Valjean from Les Mis. And we can see, what we've got here is, is some very thing, nice thing called cross-highlighting. So it shows, we've selected it in there, it shows us the proportion of where that selected amount is of the places. So we can see that 51805 worked for company 1306. He's, he's only worked on, on project 40, on, on site 42, on project 7. Uh, and he, he works for company number 2. And he's a, a 1167 type of worker. So... Uh, any other comments about this? Uh, any other surprises, not surprises? Is it what we might have expected? It could be a delivery guy. Sorry? It could be a delivery he, guy. He could be a delivery guy. So maybe he's a guy. Absolutely. That would explain why he's got so much more. He's delivering things, that are clocking in and clocking off sites. And it would be nice if we had the actual uh, type of trade and then we, we could confirm your theory. Sorry? Yep, let's have a look at him. So he's a, a, a type one, two, three, four, and works for a different company, but still on project site 42 and project seven. No, I, I didn't get that. So, yeah, but this is often happens. You get a, a set of data from the user, you've never seen it before. And this is telling us, the, right, the question to ask, because we wouldn't have known that question beforehand. Yeah, where is it? That's the next question. Tell us what these trades are. Tell us what these... What is the difference between company and company DE? I don't know. Maybe you do. Uh, well, I was just told that the company the duplicates. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you think they're, they're the duplicates. But yet yeah, they weren't, because uh, we saw that we about, I think, 100 companies and 200 company DEs, so not quite duplicates. But uh, it's something that we can test because he's in the same company. Anyway, so that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to uh, look, at, look at these and we're using cross-highlighting to explore the data. In this case, we can do something. We can look at, say, okay, this company, it's, it's got uh, various workers, but it's working on, on, on project uh, 02 in Site 58. Okay, so let's have a look. Okay, now we are going to go down a rabbit hole. Right. And so what I was going to do, first of all, was I've, I've done a calculation and I w wanted to start out working out how long, on average, does somebody work on site. And what I noticed, first of all, was I've done I, that people seem to be clocking out before they've clocked in. At least it seemed like that to me, because what I did is, is I did a calculation. <coughs> and let me show you this calculation, first of all. If I look at this, it'll tell me that my turnstile, I've created this thing called swipe duration. And what it is, is I'm, I, I'm saying, uh, I know that, the, that the, the swipe out and swipe in their dates and times, and I know sort of, I know dates and, are, to, are kind of stored as numbers in computers, so I said, if, if I take that swipe out, swipe in from swipe out, yeah, you swipe in and you swipe out, uh, then I should get the number of, a kind of fractional number of days. So if somebody's worked, I, I was expecting numbers like 33% for eight hours. But the, the data looked wrong. So what I did was I said, okay, let's do another calculation, which is this. And I'm saying, basically, oh, let's have a look at something else. Let's have a look. Yeah, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm basically doing it a slightly different one, but I'm saying if, the, if, the number, if, if, if it's the number of minutes is, is, is more than a tiny amount of minutes, then tell say it's positive, otherwise it's negative. And what I saw was that, let me just come back to this. We seem to get most people swiping out before they're swiping in. Massive fraud going on. It's a, it's a date time. I've done something wrong, or maybe there is some, we've d un un uncovered something odd. But you can see that I was expecting, I wouldn't expect any negatives at all. And it's some positives. So is it likely? Maybe they installed the backwards. Okay, all the backwards, yeah. Maybe I'm making a mistake. That's, that's a small possibility. Of, but maybe I'm making a mistake. So let, 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 let's have a look a bit further about what's going on there. And what I've tried to do, oh, I've tried to say, okay, 
I've added to my theory. I've looked at swipe duration by, I'm just saying, is it by um, site? So I, I put the air ID there, and, and we can see that we've got a, a lot of negatives and uh, hardly, we've got a few positives, but we've got a lot of negatives. So something's going on. And then I think I, 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 what I did here is I looked at the number of events. And again, so what, what I did that beforehand, I was counting the minutes or the, the hours or the days. And now I'm looking at the number of events and saying, oh, okay, something slightly different because we've got a lot more positive events and a few negative events. So the positive, so, you know, the negative events must be very large negative events. Somebody must be kind of clocking out days before they clock in or months before they clock in. So something's a bit strange. Anybody want to t know, tell me what I did wrong? I didn't get them the wrong way around, but somewhere, let me try and show you, is if I have a look at the negative sign. Okay. No, because it's got, it's, got the, it's got the date and the time there. So in fact, we have a look at this. We can see swipe in and swipe out. These look, uh, you know. So what I'm actually getting is somehow, and I, I've forgotten, I haven't shown it, is... What's happening is there are some swipe outs with a kind of zero in there for people who haven't swiped out. So it comes back to what you said earlier on. There are people who are swiping in and not swiping out. And for some reason, it's counting those swipe outs as zero. And, uh, and, and, and therefore, it, it, it's saying that they, you know, they, 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 they swiped in on in sometime in 2016 and they swiped out, uh, which actually would be the first of... 31st of December 1899, which is when the date, time, is number is, is zero. So that's what's happening. So, so what I'm doing here, so that I, I solved my problem, and we'll come on, we'll sort out that problem, but we've got more problems. I tried to have a look at, this is a, a line graph, and what happens is I'm showing the swipe in time, and I'm showing it by date. And because what's happening, we've got... Does anybody want to explain that chart? What's happening there? And is it a useful chart? Tambir. Yeah. Um, so no, it's, it's, it's over. It's over. Actually, we, what, the first thing that we can do is we can see that it's over three years. From Jan, actually two and a half years, from July 2015 to January 2018. Yeah. Except it's 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 it's. it's that, that, is, that is actually five, because the date time is to the second, that just happens at that point of time, five people swiped in, probably in different sites, to the, se to the same second. But we can just so roughly see, you know, um, we've got lots of people swiping in, there's a big, this corresponds to our Q3 mark, it just shows us again that we've got lots of, uh, lots of we've got a lot more data concentrated in the end of 2017, 2018. Um, so that's what it's showing us. It's showing us, and we've got some areas where either that's Christmas or something, but there's, or something's wrong with our data because there was, according to that, for about a month there was no work on the project. So well, I think we go back to James and say, you know, where's our data? Why are there these holes? Okay, so let's have a, uh, we had a look at that. Okay. So what's interesting now is, I have come along and I've gone to the turnstile event and what I've done is I have split them into fractions of a second, fractions of a day and we can see that this is, this is 0.2 of a day which is three or four hours. We can see that a lot of people, this is the duration, I've got, now I've got rid of my negative ones. These are what people are swiping in and swiping out for very short amount. This is a histogram. So I would have expected, again, I haven't done it in hours and minutes, but most people have a big peak about here because that's, eight, that's an eight-hour shift. But what I'm seeing is something, you know, lots of people are swiping in and swiping out within 20 minutes. So what, what do we think about that? Uh, there's quite a few security guards. Yeah, yeah. Right. So we've got a lot of security guards who are walking around the building, swiping in and swiping out different sites. And maybe for this sort of analysis of, 
of what we need to do. That suggests what we need to do is find out in a day when or a period when somebody swiped in first and swiped out last because that's the period that they really worked on site. So we need, that's suggesting that we need to do that analysis. But it would be good if we could have it, if we had our trades and, and we could see that they were security guards or whoever, that would be very interesting. Again, if we knew the, if we knew the, the trades, what we could do is we could come along and uh, if I come to my turnstile data, I could come to my trades and I could stick my trades on the legend there. That's going to look absolutely ugly. Oh, that's not what I wanted. That's not what I wanted at all. I was hoping just to put it on the... Um, but that, that didn't work, so I don't, don't know why that didn't work. Let's have a look. Okay, so um, we can also notice... I'm, here I am doing it is in, in minutes. No, I'm doing it in... So I'm, I'm doing this. Yeah, so this is a, a more detailed chart. And we can see that there's an awful lot of people swiping out in and out straight away. So we need to d deal with that. Because this is, this is probably the people who are working on shift for a while. So we've got to clean up our data. Okay. And so what I've done here is I've decided, I've come along and said, what I'm going to do with my next analysis is I'm, I'm, I'm going to create a turnstile data and I'm going to say, I'm only considering turnstile data where somebody has swiped in for a minute. And I'm going to do my rest of my analysis. I'm going to say, if it's less than a minute, then they're either, that doesn't mean anything to me. I don't know why it is. I'll ask James why people taking, swiping in and swiping out with it in less than a minute, because there are quite a lot of people doing that. But I would go on with my analysis saying, saying that. Okay. Let's, we've looked at our time our, our turnstile data, and what I want to show you is we're going to very quickly look at our, our, our diary data. So again, um, this is the third file that I got. It's, uh, it's, it's the diary entries, and I've just opened it up in a text editor. Have a look at it. Uh, I'll close it very quickly. So there it is. It tells us something about some sort of keywords that are happening. We've got some, the user is entering the weather. It's got some other thing about the weather. We've got the wind direction. So let's have a look and see what we can do with this. How does it relate to tensiles? I'm not quite sure, but maybe we can find out. So again, what I've done and is if I'm going to go back to my edit queries, and this is where I bring my data in. And I brought my, my diary data in, and this is what it looks like. It's giving us, this is exactly the, in the CSV file, basically. Um, so I've, 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 I've come to my diary data. It's got some keywords. It's got a user date. And it's got the user entered weather. Well, let me just actually, let me just go to here. This is what it looks like. It's got a user entered weather. And we can see the user can enter only certain types of weather. Any, does that indicate any problems to anybody? Any cleanup that we have to do? Where's the duplication? Yeah, so we've got lowercase and anything else? Yeah, so we've got partly cloudy and we've got this underscore. So we'd want to tidy that up. If it's useful to us, we want to tidy that up. Um, and it'd be, let's let me just cancel that. Let's look at this user time. Does anybody, if we've got all these user times, but notice we've got an AM. Somebody just decided to put in AM there. Very helpfully. So we're going to have to tidy that up if we want to. If the user time is, is useful to us, we're going to tidy that up and maybe get rid of the AMs. Um, what about the temperature? What do we need to do to that? Do we need to do anything to that? Is it all in centigrade? That's a good question. Um, so, it looks like it, but there's, we can't yet plot that on a map because that is a, a text because it's text. So, later on what we're going to do is we're going, I'm, I'm going to show you what we've done. We're going to split that up in, and just get the number out of it. Same with the wind speed. If we have a look at the wind speed, they've given us a something at MPH. Okay. So, what we're going to do is, quickly, I'm going to just going to show you a few steps to clean it up. And if later on, if you want this file, you can have it. But 
we're doing simple things. So let's have a look. We ordered columns. Remove columns. So first of all, I've, I've just removed a few columns like that zone and modified it that weren't useful. I looked at them, they look like they're not useful, I'm going to get rid of them. Then we come on to, I'm going to split a column, and I'm at my, I'm looking at my, yeah, this is quite interesting how it doesn't tell you the column. It's my, let me just go to it. I'm, I'm coming along and I'm coming to split my wind speed. I'm coming over here, if I remove my column, I'm going to, to basically take out that MPH on 14 MPH. So I come along and I'm going to basically split it by a, a space and that gives me two columns, uh, the, the wind speed number and the wind speed. And you, to answer your question, was it all MPH? Yes, it was, because otherwise we'd see something split there. So that's good. And therefore what we can do is we can change the type of that one to a, uh, a decimal and I wish I'd have done there, and then I've also, and I can remove that, the, the MPH column, and I can, and now I've got my wind speed, I'm going to call it wind speed miles per hour, and now it's uh, in, so I've got my wind speed, and now I can plot my wind speed. I'm going to do exactly the same thing with my uh, wind, I'm uh, not my wind direction, I'm going to do the same thing with my um, centigrade. So I do the so same with my centigrade, and what I've got at the end of it, I've got my centigrade in my temperature in degrees C, actually as a number now. So if I want to plot my temperature I want, against my wind speed, I can do. So let, let's come along, let's close, let's just close and apply all that. I've just cleaned it up a bit and uh, we'll quickly have a look at these. So what I've done is, first of all, I've, I've, again, I've just come and plotted the... I've, there were four files there, I've just taken one file, but again, I've just plotted the number of diary entries by date. And this, uh, I plotted them by single dates, and we can see there's a spike in 2016, we, what's, and we've got some diary entries. Maybe nobody wrote any diary, en diary entries in the first half of May, or maybe we haven't got the data. I sort of rather suspect the latter. But it, it just shows us where our diary entries are. Lots of diary entries happening on that day. Right, so the next thing I've done is, I'm going to do the, the, the exact same thing as we did before, looking at it by attributes. And I'm just saying here, what uh, if I look at my diary entries, my number of diary entries, and they're all, they're, there was this attribute called um, filing code, which I cleaned up. People are talking about metal cladding, followed by hard landscaping. Does that make sense to, is that the sort of thing they'd be putting in a diary? Do you want to tell us what a diary entry is? Do you know? I'm looking at you. I, I don't know. So, so, so diary, we, diary entry, uh, a construction manager walks around on site and says, these guys are working, these guys are working, these guys are working. And he's been a bit inconsistent, you know, multiple all right. construction managers. So PCC cladding and rain screen cladding is the same type of work, maybe done by two different companies, okay. maybe just recorded inconsistently. All right. Okay. Good. Thank you for that. Let's, um, what, what that diary had, if, if we just go back to the, the file, if I just show you the file, the original file, that diary seems to have basically um, some s information here, this information, so there's lots of information. What we're going to try and do is extract that information, extract from, from that. So what I'm going to do here is, again, I'm going to do a quick, come back to my edit queries, if I go to my diary entries, I've got my diary, and we, what I want to do is get these enterprise keywords out. These enterprise keywords are in a funny sort of format, not very helpful to us. They seem to be, the column seems to have lots of entries in it. There's a kind of number followed by a keyword, followed by a hash, another number, a semicolon, and then another keyword. So extracting those keywords looks like it might be a bit of a problem, but we can do a couple of tricks because we get those keywords. So what I've done is I've come over to here, let me start here, is I've, I've just taken a copy of it and we're just, we've, got, we've just got the keywords, I've just taken the key, that's, that's our ID of our diary entry and I've got the keywords here. And what I want to do is, is, is to just extract the keywords from this mess and then we're going to just put them on a, on a word cloud. What keywords, just as a minute, oh, you can see the keywords there, so no good asking you what you expect them to see. 
So let, let, one of the things that we can do is come along to this keyword and we can just come along and say transform it and we're just going to split the column by delimiter. In blue Peter fashion I've already done that. So I've split it. So what we've got here is we've got, I've split it, the column by this delimiter and this delimiter was a strange thing. I said just split the column up by this semicolon uh, hash. So because it was semicolon hash number, semicolon hash word, semicolon hash number, semicolon hash word. So what's useful about that pattern is that we've got, it, it's, it's split it up, and it's split it up into 12, possibly because there were at least six keywords pairs in there, 12 words. And what it's done is, it said, the first, the, all the, even, the odd ones are the number, all the even ones are the words that we want. So here we have the number, here we have the word that we want, here we have the number, here we have the word that we want. So what I can do is I can just say, actually, I just want the even columns. And that's just going to give me my words. And then I've got, once I've got there, I've got, then I can unpivot. So now I've got all the words that I wanted. I've extracted all the words out, uh, all the keywords. And because what I've done is I've, I've, got, I've got my data here. I've, I've got the only the columns that I want lots of nulls. I, I unpivot that to give me just one column and get rid of all the nulls. This is the column I want. I, I'm basically getting get rid of the column and basically I'm going to call that keywords. So now I've got a list of my keywords and then what, so what we can do now is I've got that and that relates to my ID. What I can do is, again I'll come back to that, look at my keywords. And the first thing I'm going to do is, is, is just produce a, a word chart of my keywords. And this is what I get. The bigger the keyword, the number of times it appears in the thing. Comments. Anybody want to... Is this the sort of keywords we might expect? Are there any interesting keywords? Is this in any way going to be useful to do for further analysis? Unsafe is interesting. Yeah, I agree. Um, why... why um, yep. Progress, obviously. Is it a lack of progress or is it good progress? And that's, yeah. So. Delay, delay. Yep. Weather, uh, weather delay, how often does weather and delay come together? Yes. So already, already what we've done, you, you were absolutely right. We're asking, we're starting to ask more questions. Progress or lack of progress? It is delay with weather, and we really want to constate, we really like to look at unsafe and see, you know, what's happening there. So, why have they given us this information? How does it relate to turnstiles? I must admit, I still don't know. I've done another thing. I, I put this against this so I can see that that's actually not very useful because it just shows me. So, this is a bar chart, but I, I was comparing the bar chart and the word chart. For me, the word chart is a better way of displaying this sort of information. Uh, Right, I've, I've put the weather, and I've, here what I'm doing is now I'm looking at the weather data. It tells me it's mainly cloudy in Cambridgeshire. And what I've done is I've got the weather on, on the left, and I've got the number of keywords on the right, and I can say, okay. And what I'm doing is, 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 is I'm, I'm, I'm using this left visual to filter. It's quite hard for you to see because that's... But every time I click on it, the, these are the keywords used for a sunny day. These are the keywords used for a pl partly cloudy day. And these were the keywords, if I can click on it, use, actually there's, only, there's not many keywords for a clear night, but the keywords were delayed deliveries, downtown, plant and accessory, which isn't a keyword, which is free keywords. I've got to do something about that, or maybe we should treat it as one. But again, I can start looking and see visually, seeing if the patterns later on, I might want to get some of our clever data scientists to kind of tell me if there's any correlation of building machine learning. But here I am, see... Is it, is it worthwhile taking this analysis any further? Is it, um, and, and I'm just doing kind of a visual kind of inspection of it. And this isn't telling me very much indeed. I'm going to do my last one, and I'm going to ask you about this. What I've done, and you can explain this to me, is I have plotted the temperature. Remember, we took the temperature, and I plotted the temperature against each single day. Anybody got any unease about working conditions in the A14 project? 300 degrees is a bit warm. It's a bit warm, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so no wonder they. So, and I, I can't believe it isn't usually that warm. Is the, is the decimal 
put you in the wrong place. Hmm. Are you suggesting I've made a mistake? How dare you? I'm just suggesting the decimal points on the different place. Oh, no, it's not. My data is... actually put in 300, didn't they? Well, does anybody else want to, to suggest what... Degrees absolute. Ah, it could be degrees absolute. That would, that would be about right, yes. But then you've got... You, it gets pretty cold here some days, doesn't it? It's, it's just about minus 200 degrees centigrade. So you win and you lose. So which would you prefer? It's one decimal place. No, it's not one decimal place. I'd made the classic mistake. The, well, the, the uh, what do you call it? The legend isn't reading the data properly. But no, the legend's fine. The legend's fine. Degrees Sorry? The degrees. The degrees. The degrees. No, 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 it's not done that. Okay. How many diary entries are there in one day? Uh, one. One. Oh, you've accumulated them. them. Yes, yeah, so, so there are some days that have lots of diary entries. And what I have done is uh, I have come along and I've just dragged, come along here, I've dragged my user day, I've dragged my temperature. And I said, aha, it gets very hot in Cambridgeshire. And what I forget is that really every visualization is an aggregation of data. And it simply doesn't say the sum of the temperature, because most of the time we, what we want to do is we want to sum our data, our costs and our revenues. But summing the temperature is probably not a good thing. Um, what we can do is maybe want to average our temperatures, and maybe that starts to look a bit more reasonable about the temperatures. But we're still averaging over the day. And the last thing I've done is, again, and this is our last visualization, I've said, okay. And here we come to the marvelous conclusion that the British weather changes. Because what I've done is I've, I've, I've put the number of dates. These are the number of diary entries by date. So the most diary entries were made on the 28th of July, 2016. And I've, 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 I've put, uh, put the legend, which is the, the type of weather. And we can see that the British weather changes during the day. Who would have known that? Uh, and so... But at least we can see that we've got a distribution of diary entries. So what we've done is we have looked at our data. We didn't have, an hour ago, we didn't have a clue about our data, what it was, where it was. We've, we've come to that, we, we realize we have to go back and have a serious talk with James about giving us better data. We've got lot wider data. What are these trades? And uh, we're going to start now a conversation. We've got the wherewithal to go back to and ask some really intelligent questions of our customer to start the process, this iterative process of, 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 of kind of coming to some conclusions about our data. So, thank you for that. Any, any final questions? Good. If you want this PBIX, uh, the Power BI file, I can send it to you. Good. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.